Hello there viewers, happy 2018 to all of you. This video is being uh, shot on the first day of January 2018. You might think or wonder to yourself, so why does my voice sound the way it does? Well, I said why does my voice sound the way it does? That's because, let me take these bad boys out of here. That's because I'm using what's called a sound power telephone. Now, sound power telephones are very interesting technology. Okay? Sound power telephones were used and are still used by the military for reliable communication. They're used on battleships and various other places where if you had a horrible situation and you lost all power you could still communicate with a sound power telephone. The sound power telephone is exactly that, sound powered. Sound power telephones do not use batteries. They use the voice itself vibrating the diaphragm of a balanced armature transducer which is very efficient. Balanced armature transducers are far more efficient than electrodynamic or moving coil transducers. Using the balanced armature transducer you send the sound directly through a pair of wires to another balanced armature transducer to be heard. Another thing is, within the actual telephone handset, you have two balanced armature drivers. Well, two, excuse me, transducers. Two balanced armature transducers. And they're both internally wired in parallel. So normally, you can still hear your voice through the uh, speaker, although I'm not very well right now. Since they're both wired in parallel, they actually can technically both act as microphones. If I cover up the microphone here, and I speak into the speaker portion, you can still hear my voice come through nicely, as well as whenever I speak through the microphone portion. Anyway, that's a sound power telephone for you, and um, we'll be showing you some more on these very interesting devices. Right now, the microphone input to the camera is directly hooked up to the sound power telephone. So you, the sound power telephone transducer is what's being used as the mic. But another idea is, well, maybe you want to hear a little bit more what a sound power telephone is like, a little bit more in the real world. So that's what I'm about to do next. Also, if I talk to the one that has a telephone pickup coil, you can see it actually picks up the most of my voice 
because not only is a telephone pickup coil picking up any electrical um, inductance, it, it's, it's picking it up at the strongest amplitude available. And I am also wondering if the movement of the balanced armature inside is also being picked up by the pickup coil. But that's just speculation. Sound power telephones are a very interesting technology. Okay, so now I have a lapel microphone hooked up. It's hooked up through this uh, little power powered supply here so that I can go to my camera because my camera's microphone input uh, does not give out power to power condenser mics. So I have to uh, provide it with power with this device. And I, yes, it is tending to pick up a little bit of radio interference. So anyway, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> hold on brother, hold on brother. Here in this closet, I will have one sound power telephone. Up to this sound power telephone will be a lapel microphone put up to its speaker. Then I will go at a small distance as much as I can get along with a long audio video cord and we'll speak through the phone that way with the door to the closet closed. Yo brother, so I'm just going to get this uh, lapel mic and uh, put it right to the earpiece of this uh, sound power telephone. I got a towel to help hold it in place and then I can also put the towel over it to help keep out external noise. Towel assembly ready. This is a test to hear how audible my voice is with the sound power telephone turned off or disconnected to see how well the muffler works. When I'm not speaking into the sound power telephone, you can hear that I'm not very audible. Whenever I speak to the sound power telephone, you hear a huge difference. You can hear that my voice all of a sudden is a lot more audible. I'm not monitoring my voice right now through earbuds for my camera is at too far of a distance. But thankfully, my camera has a little meter on it whenever you plug an external microphone in to show the audio level. And I can see that it's definitely picking up well, really well. If I speak uh, like this without the phone on my mouth, once I speak to the phone, you can definitely hear my voice. 
here is a transducer to a sound powered telephone and this kind of transducer can work well as both a microphone and earpiece. Now the frequency response is not very good and it has a DC resistance of about 60 ohms. Here's the back of the device. You can see it's made by the US Instrument Corporation and it looks like it has a date code dated 1957. Now I've taken off a couple of little screws here so I can show you the inside. Unlike the traditional speaker that has a permanent magnet with a moving voice coil to, vi to vibrate a typically paper diaphragm, this uses what's called the balanced armature. Now you can see in the design of this transducer, you can see it has a little pin right in there. Notice if I rub the pin, it makes sound. So you have here a permanent magnet surrounding right here and then you have an electromagnet inside within the windings of the electromagnet is a metal flapper or moving piece and attached to that flapper is the armature which has little bitty nuts so you can make extremely precise adjustments. I did have to adjust this one a little bit and then that armature will move the metal diaphragm or of course it'll work as a microphone. The diaphragm moving this flapper which um, vibrates within the electromagnet to produce electricity. Because of the higher impedance of this and the balanced armature design itself, it's very efficient as a transducer. And therefore this design is used in the sound powered telephones. Using this transducer as a microphone, I made a test recording. Now first, let's listen to how it sounds when played through the recorder's speaker, and then we'll play it back through the transducer. Well, there I have adjusted the balanced armature. I made it a little bit more balanced, and now I can get a lot better performance out of this transducer as both a microphone and an earpiece. I can already tell that just from adjusting it, the sensitivity to sound as a microphone is far increased. And if I speak up right up to it, it'll turn off right now, camera. If I speak up right up to it, and yeah, it get a lot of fluctuation. But even if I speak at a distance, I get a lot of fluctuation on the meter. We will also be playing back audio through this transducer to hear how it sounds and have an idea of its loudness. Now let's play back the recording through the transducer. Well, there I have adjusted the balance armature. I've made it a little bit more balanced. And now I can get a lot better performance out of this transducer. It has both a microphone and an earpiece. I can already tell that just from adjusting it, the sensitivity to sound as a microphone is far increased. And if I speak up right up to it, it'll turn off right now, camera. If I speak up right up to it, and I get a lot of fluctuation. But even if I speak at a distance, I get a lot of fluctuation on the meter. We will also be playing back audio through this transducer. Oh. A little alligator clip came off. 
But anyway, now you, so you got to hear how it played back through the transducer. It's not the most loudest in the world, but it is good as an earpiece. Though keep in mind, it's a lot louder out of the transducer now than it was before I performed little slight adjustments on its little nuts.